Good evening. Um, decided to do this uh, lesson down here in the garage. A little different. I just thought I'd try. I've been wanting to try to do this uh, for a while, and, uh, so I decided to try to do this. A little. I don't have a very good setup here, but anyway, uh, got me a light set up in the chair, so a few things propped up here to to put the phone on and all. But anyway, uh, before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank for this time to. Uh, to look into your word, we pray for your spirit to, to guide us, to rightly divide the word. Uh, Lord, we pray for your word to sink into our heart, Lord, and we can, we could uh, obey your word, be do as your word, not just hear us, and that we could be the witness you need us to be as we meet people who need to know you as our Savior and, and to lift up each other as Christians. Um, Lord, we pray for the sick, we pray for uh, those that, that need to know you as Savior, Lord, that your mercy would be upon them and your spirit would draw them, and um, Lord, um, we lift you up as our friend and Savior, our King of Kings, our Lord Lords. These things we ask in Jesus' name. All right, will be done, Lord. Amen. Uh, we'll look at Romans uh, 3, um, verses uh, actually 1 through 20. Uh, divide this this uh, lesson was divided up in the lesson quarterly, um, and I was glad that they divided the third chapter of Romans up in uh, uh i think about three different lessons but i've divided a little different um there's one more after this but it really gets into some great scripture in the last part of the third chapter of romans but we're not going to get there today uh lord willing that will be next week uh, you know a long time ago i heard a preacher say um uh, what are you doing what you're doing when you're doing it um and I may not got that quote exactly right, but that's that's the gist of what he said, and uh, that's that sunk with me and stuck with me all these years. And uh, I heard it on a tape a friend let me borrow one time, and um, I can't even remember the preacher. But uh, in other words, what's in your heart? What what motivates you? What is making you do what you're doing? Um, what is your motive? Um, some people do things just to please God. They think, well, if I do enough stuff or I don't do enough stuff and a uh, combination thereof that God will be happy with me and I'll be okay with him on uh, when I stand before him in judgment. But that's not that's not salvation. That's not biblical. And uh, sadly, that's uh, a concept that gets presented to people and, and people buy into that. And they never really hear what God's word has to say about these things in the true plan of salvation. Uh, the, the plan of salvation is much simpler than that. It's the blood of Jesus Christ washing you clean from your sins. And uh, we have to believe in the, the finished work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and his resurrection. That's that's what God accepts. I'll say that over and over again because that's just the truth and the sim simplicity of the gospel. That's what God accepts, not what I do or don't do. Um, now, when you come to Christ, obviously I want to, clear this up, you, you know, it motivates you to do what's right and to not do what's wrong. You have a desire then because the Spirit of God is dwelling in you and leading you. And um, you become a new creature in Christ. Um, let's look at Romans um, 2, verses 25 through 29 to lead into uh, chapter 3. And I've already got, got on the wrong page already. For circumcision verily profiteth if you keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. And circumcision was given, the right of circumcision was given to Abraham before the law was given. Uh, and then after um, the law was given, uh, the male children were circumcised. And of course, uh, Christ's mom and dad fulfilled that uh, right with, with him when he was a child. And of course, Christ fulfilled all the law. He didn't destroy the law. He said, I came to fulfill the law, and that he did. Uh, but Paul says here, well, this profits you if you keep the law. If you're following the right of circumcision as a Jew does uh, in keeping the law, that's great if you keep the law. But if that's the only part of the law you keep, you know, you've not done very good. You, <laughs> you've, you've already failed. So says, therefore, if the, the uncircumcision keep the right keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, 
judge thee who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress dost transgress the law. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is in one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart. Now notice what he said here, keep that in mind. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of man, but of God. So what God wants is our heart. Uh, Christ talked about some people who served him with their lips, but their heart was far from him. And uh, he was looking back to Isaiah chapter 29 uh, when, he, when he said that. And let me read that scripture to you out of Matthew, uh, Matthew 20, uh, 15, verse 79. Christ says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now notice here, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They're making up their own rules. And, you know, we see that sometimes. Things that are, like I say, that are taught that, uh, you know, become uh People think it's scripture, and they they don't really look to see that it's what the scripture actually says. But they just hear something that's been said over and over in church, and uh, they don't want to offend somebody by saying, "Hey, you know, that's not really scripture. That's not really right." You know, they just overlook it, or they just don't check it. Uh, we need to be in this word, and we'll see why the oracles of God are. Um, are so so important but god wants our heart christ said you know you you worship me with your lips you know it's it's easy to say things but when it comes to doing that's a different thing isn't it uh <clears throat> but god wants our heart uh, psalms 119 verses 9 to 11 says wherewith with all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word with my whole heart have i sought thee let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might, might not sin against thee. So the word of God is, is an important thing. It keeps you in the right way. And <laughs> young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. And Christ said they were teaching doctrines of men um, <clears throat> instead of following the word of God. And that's what happened uh, with the with the Pharisees. They were they were doing that very thing. And I want to turn over to Ezekiel. <clears throat> Ezekiel was a priest prophet. He was carried away to Babylon, and he'd seen some tremendous visions, which I can't explain. Uh, Sister Mildred and Larry Wells were truly Bible scholars when they were uh, living and and attending church, and both of them have gone home to be with the Lord, but. Uh, e even Mildred, I can remember her talking about how Ezekiel was a tough uh, uh, prophet to, to study and uh, figure out. And uh, if she didn't figure it out, I, it, it's even rougher for me. I can tell you that right now because she forgot more than I'll ever know. But um, Ezekiel talked about how they went astray. He, um, he was carried away to Babylon. They seen some tremendous visions. And um, <clears throat> I'll read out of Ezekiel 44, verses 4 through 8. Then brought, me, uh, then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house, and I stood, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face, and the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold, with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. <clears throat> And all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in the house, with the, with every going forth of the sanctuary. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, and that ye have brought into my sanctuary. Strangers, now notice, uncircumcised in heart. And Paul said, um, you know, that was a, a problem. You know, God was looking for someone who is a Jew, not just 
physical circumcision, but circumcision of the heart. God is after what's in your heart. What motivates you to do what you do? Are you just going through uh, the motions of going to church and singing a song, throwing some money in the plate, maybe doing some good little deeds? But what is in your heart? What is motivating you to do that? Is are, is a person doing that to thinking they're doing that to be saved, or are they doing that because they are saved? There's a difference there. Um, in the seventh verse again, it says, In that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. To be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house. <clears throat> then ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood and they have broken my covenant because all of your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. You remember Christ talking about the teaching the doctrines of men for, for the commandments of God. Um, they've set keepers in the house for themselves. They're going to do what they want to do, not what they said to the Lord. Now, if you if you go back to the eighth chapter of Ezekiel and you get to reading, you you see uh, God showing him, uh, you know what's going on in Jerusalem, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of what Ezekiel saw were visions. Like I say, he was carried away to Babylon, so um, a lot of what he seen was visions, and uh, it, it's tough to interpret all those. But he he got to see some things going on, and. Um, he got to see the elders, like 70 elders of Jerusalem. Uh, and I think this was a vision, but, uh, you know, I haven't stayed deeply into it. But uh, you get back to that eighth chapter of Ezekiel and, and read some background and see. But <clears throat> what God showed him was like 70 elders of Israel involved in idolatry in, in secret, thinking they're, they're hiding that from God. That's what they think they're doing. Uh, he um, he sees women weeping for uh Tammuz, and uh, remember, now he's in at Babylon. So one of the ancient goddesses was Ishtar, and she was associated with um, pornography. She's associated with prostitution. Um, she's the one that said she can she said she was able to change a man to a woman, a woman to a man. You know, we see where that's going at in our uh, country around the world today. Uh, Tammuz was her lover. <clears throat> Not that she was loyal to him, but he was her lover. And there's a lot of mythology goes along with with these ain't the worship of these ancient gods. But you can see uh, Ezekiel's been shown that this is at Jerusalem. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is infiltrated there, all the way from Babylon. Um, but it's the, the demons are the parts behind those ancient gods, and we can see. As I, you know, you have read in Jonathan Kahn's book, The Return of the Gods, you see it happening in our culture today and around the world. You see that sort of thing going on. Now in verse 9 out of the 44 chapter of Ezekiel, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Now notice, uncircumcised in heart is not truly serving God um, stranger you know if we relate that to the the modern day church we might we might say that we put a preacher in the, the pulpit that's not sincere he may not even be saved uh, could that happen um, well I've got a modern day example of uh, uh, a preacher that's gone wrong and I, ha I hate to call out names but I'm going to have to a little later on but anyway we'll get into that um, a little later on, I'll show you an example, and you can you can watch the video and see what the guy actually is, is teaching now. Uh, and it's it's pretty sad. It's sad that our churches have got this way. But what's happened? We've put keepers in charge that are not teaching God's word. They have went astray. Um, I I can't judge anybody. I can't say who's saved and who's not. But um, some of them I have to wonder if they've ever been. Uh, saved or if they just turned their heart from God it's uh, uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in the flesh they're not supposed to enter into the, the sanctuary of the children of Israel that is 
uh, what verse 9 is telling us. Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. They put keepers in charge in God's sanctuary for themselves. We see that in our church today. Second <clears throat> um, Timothy 4 verse 3 tells us, Paul writes to Timothy, he says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. And verse 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Well, that's definitely what we see. And we see it in ancient Israel here, when you know Paul was talking about people who are uncircumcised in heart. God is looking for someone with a true heart worshiping him. Uh, you know, we see a lot of crazy stuff now. People, um, uh, I've heard of people marrying robots. <laughs> you know, you maybe someone uh, watching this has watched um, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. They had the android on there, Data, and he wanted to have feelings uh, like a human. And I think one of the, maybe maybe at least one of the episodes there, I think there was a chip or something he could have put in to give him emotions. Um, I don't know. I, I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, that that's kind of interesting. But th today I hear about people, and I don't know if they're actually doing it or not, but I've, I've heard stories about people wanting to marry a robot. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, I know that they're making more and more human-like robots. And uh, that may, I, I've said different times, that may be a fulfillment of uh, the uh, image of the beast speaking. I don't know that, but uh, that's, just a, that's just something I've, I've thought about. Uh, we get back to Romans 3, um, all that leading up to it. Um, <clears throat> I want to read verse 1 and 2, and Paul asks a question here. Um, what advantage? then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? If God's looking for someone who's not just a Jew outwardly, but a circumcision of the heart, a true heart towards God. Uh, Paul answers that question in verse 2. He says, much every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Well, let's look back at, at Romans 2, verses 11 through 16. Uh, Paul writes, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned, as for as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law. Now that's what he says about the Gentiles. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. You know, remember how you talk about God has revealed himself to, to mankind. He's revealed himself to mankind through creation. And everyone uh, at one time knew God because uh, they knew who he was because we all came from Adam and Eve. Um, <clears throat> for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. So what Paul's saying here is, you know, the Gentiles didn't have the written oracles of God given to them. Uh, the law was given, you know, to, to Moses. So God has revealed himself to the Jew, and that is, that's a big advantage. It's been committed to them, the oracles of God. Um, committed is Strong's number 4100, and Vine's dictionary just gives, uh, gives a, a simple explanation of that, to, to entrust. So it's been continued, committed to them. It's been entrusted to them to take care of, to do the right thing with. Uh, an oracle is uh, Strong's uh, 3051, and uh, Vine gives, I won't give the complete de definition that Vine gives, but it, a d divine response or utterance, 
So it's a communication of God to man. And that word, 3015, or I'm sorry, 3051, Strong's 3051, Oracle, it's used in Acts 738 uh, here in Romans 3.2. And uh, Hebrews 5.12. And one I want to look at is 1 Peter 4.11. It's used those four times in the New Testament. And of course, um, uh, God communicated to man different ways uh, in the Old Testament. And my son preached uh, out of Hebrews. I listened to that, that message on YouTube coming home from work. Radio don't work in my car, so I, a lot of times I get something on the phone like that. Uh, scripture... Let the Bible read to me, uh, Gideon's Bible app or something like that. Uh, I can get King of Kings Radio. They broadcast online. But um, <clears throat> I listened to him preaching out of Hebrews. And he uh, was talking about how it talks that God God communicated to man different ways in the Old Testament. Remember, Moses was face to face, which is a pretty awesome thing. Um, but, you know, an uh, oracle can be summed up as uh, you know, God's communication to man. And in these last days, he's spoken to us by Jesus Christ. Um, I believe it's how Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews puts that. Uh, so these oracles of God, this God's communication to us is an important thing. It is something that's committed to the Jews and we have the whole Bible. We have the whole written word of God for us. They just had the, the Old Testament back then. Uh, Hebrews 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath pointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So God has spoken to us through his Son, we have this written word. The, the Jew had an advantage of having this. And so the Jew is to be the witness to the world. Uh, <clears throat> that was, that was a, a, a great commitment that the Jews had. Uh, but look at what uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 11. It says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, I'm not supposed to just do a lesson like this and just give you some opinions and things that... I need to give you what God's Word says. And I know sometimes we give opinions, but uh, opinions need to be just that, and people make sure that, you know, you know some things are uh, hard to tell exactly when it's uh, <clears throat> like the book of Revelation or Daniel where there's a vision scene or something. Um, and... You have an opinion. Well, this is prophecy, and I, I think this is how it's going to unfold. That's just an opinion. But when God says, thou shalt or thou shalt not, that's just clear cut. You know what it means. But God has given us things, the shadows of things that, uh, just like I was talking about the uh, image of the beast. Uh, AI may be how the image of the beast speaks. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's just, that's just a, an opinion there, that it may happen and may not be that way but we see the what i'm saying is we see the technology there but that's just my opinion but we need to speak as the oracles of god and make sure that we are uh, rightly dividing the word of god here's what peter's telling us uh not just well this is just an old saying that uh you know cleanliness is next to godliness and you know people say well they that's one of them that they they can't find in the bible um so maybe someone finds it they can let me know uh, but uh, I don't think that when you'll find the Bible but uh, yeah I could be wrong maybe it's there somewhere and just I haven't ever seen it but uh, things like that there are things that maybe are said that um, just you, you don't find it in the Bible and, and maybe some things are worded a little different way and you may find it there but um, it's important 
that we rightly divide the word of God, that if we speak, we're speaking the oracles of God and not not something like what I'm going to show you here in just a little bit. Um, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16. Jeremiah, uh, you know, prophesied to the, the children of Israel before they were carried away to Babylon, you know, and, and um, uh, he was um, <clears throat> persecuted for it greatly. But he was telling them the truth. Uh, in verse 16 out of the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of God. They're not speaking the oracles of God. And he goes on to talk about these. And Now, there's a, a lot in this chapter, and it's, uh, it starts out in, in verse 1 of the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. It says, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep to my pastor, said the Lord. People who are not speaking the oracles of God. The oracles of God were given to the Jewish people. And here we see they're in trouble in the book of Jeremiah because they haven't followed the word of God. And they've had people who are prophets who are leading them astray. We got that today, and I will give you an example of uh, some people being led astray by a guy. And I hate to, I hate to call out a name, but you can watch. I'll give you the where you can find the video, and you can watch and see what he said. Um, but verses twenty-one through twenty-five out of the twenty-third chapter of Jeremiah, God says, "I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them." Yet they prophesied. They're not speaking the oracles of God like Peter said that that's what we need to be speaking. But they have stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words. Then they should, I'm sorry, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, I'll read that right <laughs> this time. Then they sh should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar of off? So you can't get away from God. He's a God afar of off too. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. So Jeremiah, a long ago, told about people whose heart was not circumcised. They, they prophesied uh, falsely to these people. These people are now in, in deep, dark trouble. They've been in idolatry, they, and now they're about to be carried away to Babylon. Um, Christ talked about these people whose heart was far from him. Um, now, the modern day guy I wanted to, to bring out here, and this, this kind of shocked me. And um, he played the clip, and um, it, it looks like it's true. Uh, the guy who put this on YouTube is... He's a Russian guy, and I can't say his name, but I'll spell it for you. V-I-A-D, that's his first name, S-A-V-C-H-U-K. Uh, he did an interview also with Jonathan Kahn, author of uh, Return of the Gods, and that, that was an interesting interview he had with him. But the, the video I'm talking about here of Andy Stanley is homosexuality in the church. And... Uh, Andy Stanley didn't exactly come out and say it was okay to live a homosexual lifestyle, but he got talking about how the church was they treated these people bad. Now, I know there's probably been some Christians who has treated them in the wrong way, approached them in the wrong way. Uh, we're not called to be mean to these people. Christ was a friend of publicans and sinners, and we are to be also, to be a witness. We have to, have to treat these people right. We are not to condone what they do, but Andy was talking about how that uh, if they've been treated this bad and want to come in and worship, 
uh, you know, he's talking and commending them on that. Uh, well, we want these people to come to church. I, I want to have a, a whole sanctuary full of them running over to hear the gospel. I hope they watch this video. Um, because they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear that God's word tells you that lifestyle is wrong. Um, it's sexual sin is sexual sin, and the Bible calls it out as this. And it doesn't matter if it's sexual sin, adultery between a man and a woman, or sexual sin against people of the same uh, uh, sex. Uh, it's all sexual sin. The Bible calls it out. Um, <clears throat> and we're not to endorse it, but we don't want to uh, prevent them from coming to church. They're, certainly, we need them in the sanctuary, listening to the, the gospel being presented, listening to the truth of God's word. Uh, a friend uh, told me one time that... Um, he was in a church, and there was two people of the same sex came in, uh, partners, same-sex partners, and I can't remember what they did or anything, but the pastor went back to them and, and got on them right then and there and in the middle, you know, somewhere in the, the church service. And he said, well, what would you have done? I said, well, if I was going to say something to them, I don't think I would have went in the middle of the church service and embarrassed people right there. I would have waited until after and got them in private and, and tried to counsel. Uh, we're not to be mean to these people. That's not the, not the way. Um, you shouldn't be rude and obnoxious with the, with the gospel. Um, but it's like this. I can't tell them that that's okay. Um, because God's word tells me it's, it's wrong. God's word tells me my sin's wrong. Uh, I can't endorse mine any more than I can theirs. But uh, it's, it's kind of like this. Um, I drive across the 6th Street Bridge every day going to work, except uh, Sunday. That's the only day I'll, I'll get off. But anyway, uh, uh, six days a week I'm driving across the 6th Street Bridge. If there was a hole in that bridge that your car could fall through, and I just switch lanes and go around it and just keep it right on going, well, boy, I'm glad I missed that one. Uh, and I don't stop and try to prevent the, the guy behind me. Uh, I know this ain't. A real good example, but if I don't tell the guy behind me, I just go around that and avoid that and say, boy, boy, I'm glad I missed that one. I hope, hope next guy don't hit it. Uh, he fall down to the high river, you know. Uh, what kind of a person would I be? Uh, we need to warn people that apart from the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. And, uh, you know, we'd, we certainly wouldn't tell a, um, a serial killer. Uh, I heard... Um, Testimony from Theodore Robert Bundy, Ted Bundy, that he got saved before he was executed. Um, <clears throat> we wouldn't tell a person like that, um, what's well, okay, you know, you got saved, go ahead out and kill some more people. You know, uh, someone like that, we would tell them, no, you need to change that lifestyle. There needs to be a repentance uh, once you're saved, a turning from that old lifestyle. And when God's Spirit comes into your life, um, that's what changes you. Um, and there's no way you're going to change yourself. You, you can't change yourself in, uh, enough to, to be good enough to go to heaven. And um, there's no one bad enough that they can't go, that they can't be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I like that little saying by Adrian Rogers. Um, there's no one too good that they don't need to be saved. There's no one too bad that they can't be saved. But uh, that video there, uh, Homosexuality in the Church, you can go watch it and see what you think of Andy Stanley. And, um, and he openly admitted, he says, well, I know what Romans 1 says. Uh, and he, some other scriptures he mentioned, I can't remember what they were, but he, he, knows what, he knows what the scripture says about this lifestyle and, and it being wrong. Um, and then he starts making excuses. Well, when I read God's word and it tells me something, uh, my opinion don't matter. It's what God's word tells me is right and wrong. That's what that's what matters. My opinion don't don't really mean anything unless it lines up with God's word. Uh, see, uh, Brian Stambo uh, watching there is good, good to hear from you, Brian. I hope you're doing good and hope everything's going well for you.
uh, let's see, Romans um, 3, verses 3 through 4. I got kind of a little overview of that. Um, Paul asked another question. What if some of the Jews didn't believe? Well, if they don't believe that, don't change God's plan of salvation. Verse 4 says, let God be true, but every man a liar. So just because of my unbelief or Jews' unbelief, the plan of salvation is still intact. Um, another little question here. Um, does it uh, upset you if someone takes something that you said and kind of puts a spin on and twists it around a little bit and makes it sound like you said something you didn't, makes it mean something that you didn't say, well, that probably would upset you a little bit. It, it, it would me. I don't like things like that. But, uh, it's probably happened to all of us at some time or another. Someone takes something kind of out of context. <clears throat> Let's read verses 5 through 8 out of 3rd chapter of Romans. And uh, this is kind of grace taken the wrong way. He says, but after the hardness and impotent heart treasures up, oh, I'm wrong, sorry, I'm wrong, I don't think that sounded right. Let's turn the page here. <clears throat> but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie, under his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, uh, Paul was saying, you know, they're, they're saying that this is what I said, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. And Paul was saying, you know, they're slanderously reporting this, uh, that I said this, and that's not what Paul's saying. Um, you know, the righteousness of God, um, th through my sin, uh, the righteousness of God looks bright. It it looks clean and white, which it is. And, and you know, um, light expels darkness. Uh, darkness can't put out light, but light makes darkness go away. It's like I set me up a little light here in the garage. Um, but if, if, um, if my darkness makes light look bright, uh, brighter, and, you know, my sin makes God look more righteous, um, that doesn't condone, that doesn't give me an excuse to sin. <laughs> and the sixth chapter of Romans says, Paul says, uh, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then he says, God forbid. Uh, I like to paraphrase that. Some other paraphrase that by saying, um, "Don't be stupid." Uh, you know, it's silly for me to think that. You know, because grace is a tremendous thing. It covers things. It, it covers my sin. Whatever my sin is, it covers. But that's not an excuse to to continue on in sin. And uh, I make the grace of God look really great because it's covering my sin. Well, you know, if I have an attitude like that. To, you know, hey, I'm going to do this because I can get by with it because grace is going to take care of it. And, uh, you know, I've not got my heart right with God. Um, <clears throat> let's look at uh, this little bit of reading here, but we'll look at uh, verses 10 through 18. He goes through the whole list of sins here, and I'm going to go ahead and read them. Uh, well, um, 9 through 18, rather. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jew and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now remember that little phrase right there. We proved Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. It is written, as it is written. Um, he goes to a, a kind of a list of, of sins here. Uh, I like what Adrian Rogers said one time. He said, uh, if you're going through a sin list somewhere in the Bible, I don't remember which one, but he said uh, now, if you don't find yourself here, don't worry. You're on another one somewhere. So that's the way with all of us, isn't it? Uh, we, when we read the Word of God, it's going to reveal to us what's wrong in our life. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Some of these you'll find in Psalms 14. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are 
together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, if we get down to that 18th verse, it kind of sums up the condition of man. Uh, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Um, you know, when a man lays his hand on a Bible and takes the oath of office to serve in, <clears throat> as a, in some office in the United States government, and then does things to promote sin, uh, there's no fear of God in that man. You lay your hand on a Bible and that you're swearing on God's word that you know, you're going to do the right thing, and then you promote sin. I don't care who you are or what your political affiliation is. Uh, you're you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, it's a it's a sad thing when America has come to what has come. Uh, you know, our founding fathers, uh, maybe not all of them were saved, but they believed in God. And uh, I th the way our country was set up, I think there was some fear of God in them. And uh, you have to wonder if people do the things they do and lay their hand on that Bible. And knowing what God's Word says, at least I think they should know what it says. If they're going to lay their hand on it and swear by it, uh, surely they would realize that some of the things going on in the United States and laws being made to legalize certain things that are just absolutely wrong, um, it seems like they just don't have any fear of God. Um, <clears throat> uh, some words that are, are sort of popular today are inclusive, inclusion, and inclusive. Uh, you know, Christians are accused of not being inclusive. So, um, when these words are used by the woke community, what what are they referring to? It's kind of like, well, you know, I want you to be inclusive. I want you to um, change your belief to suit my belief, to suit my lifestyle. And, you know, I don't um, try to force Christianity on anybody. I present, present it to them, present the gospel to them, and witness to them. But I'm not trying to say that, hey, you have to do this uh, or else, you know, or I'm going to make some kind of law that forces you to, to, be, to be a Christian. Um, but what's happening is they want you to um, adhere to their lifestyle. They want you to say, well, it's all right. Uh, but being inclusive, they're not inclusive at all of the Christian faith. Um, they can go off and live their lifestyle if they want. Uh, I can't force them to be a Christian, uh, to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, but they want us to be inclusive and say, hey, you know, it's okay. You come into your church and uh, you can preach if you want to, uh, teach God's word if you want to, um, and be a man and wear a dress and go into the girls' restroom. And, you know, they're, that's what they're wanting. That's what it is talking about. Uh, well, next question here. Um, is God inclusive? And as we read through the book of Romans, we find out, yes, he is. And let's work, look at verses 19 and 20. I'll finish up here. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that, now notice this, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So God is including all the world guilty. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Well, I know I've done wrong because there's laws that, uh, not just the laws that God gives, <laughs> the laws of the land. You know, we probably none of us have kept all the laws of the land that man has come up with. Well, let's look over here at Romans 3, 9. The verse I told you to kind of remember about it says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So I titled this lesson, Are We Better Than They? So we're all sinners. All of us have uh, 
born into this world. We came into this world as sinners. Uh, J. Bar <laughs> McGee, I remember listening to one of his uh, uh, shows, and he, he's talking about, uh, I can't talk like him, but it's it's funny how he, he put it. He says, uh, them little, little babies are born into the world. And yeah, we all love those little babies, and they look so innocent and everything. And, and, and to us, they are. I mean, I, but I realize that they are born a, a sinner. Now, I'm not saying a baby is unsaved. If a baby dies, it's before that age of accountability, I believe it, it's in heaven. Now, I've uh, got a grandson. I've got a brother in heaven. Um, I, I firmly believe that. Uh, but what J. Vernon McGee was, um, was pointing out was we're, we're born with that sinful nature, nature and uh, we are accountable for our sin when we get to that age where we know better. And then uh, he's, he's saying that, and it's a little sinner been born in the world, and I can't put it exactly like him, but it's funny how he was talking about that, because, you know, uh, the mommy's, I thought, man, you know, the, the mommy's not going to like what he's saying there. Um, but we're all, we, we're all sinners. We're all guilty. Uh, you know, you may not have killed someone. You may not have robbed the bank, but hey, regardless, maybe, hopefully we all haven't got that far off, but we, we're all sinners. And God has included us all as sinners. The Jews, they had an advantage of having the God's revelation given to them in the law of Moses. Uh, another scripture here that I want to show you that proves God is inclusive uh, Galatians three twenty two. but the scripture hath concluded uh, I want to look at something right quick uh, the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe uh, I have a Westminster reference Bible it's a, just a King James reference Bible uh, uh, Westminster is the name of it, but um, it gives another word you could use for concluded, and it is included. <laughs> so God is God is inclusive. He has concluded all under sin that the faith that that the cross by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So everyone's under sin. According to God, he's included all under sin, the Jew and the Gentile, so that you, everyone can have salvation through Jesus Christ. Um, so are we better than they? No, the Jews not better than the Gentile. Uh, they have had committed to them the oracles of God, but we have committed to us the oracles of God also. We, we have it the whole written word of God. And uh, Paul said, uh, what advantage has the Jew? Well, what advantage has someone who's living in the United States? Well, we have the freedom to worship. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't have to worry about someone uh, feeding me to the lions because I went to church today or because I'm posting a Sunday school lesson. Uh, but here we have a great freedom that we, we could just blossom as a, Christian nation and be a light to the whole world. Um, we have committed unto us that freedom, and what are we doing with it? Uh, the churches are closing, and uh, we're, we're getting false teachers more and more. Um, <clears throat> so it's the the time is nigh. I mean, Christ is coming back, and God has included each and every one of us as in sin, but each and every one of us can have salvation. Be freed from sin. The only remedy for sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. And God has made that available to all of us. So I'm thankful for that. And uh, thank you, Brian, for, for watching this. And like I said, I hope you're doing good. I hope everything's well with you. And uh, if there's someone out there that, that doesn't know Christ your Savior, I urge that you put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection, God will save you. Uh, if you believe that that's what paid for your sins, that's the only thing that'll pay for your sins. The only remedy for sin, the only remedy for our nation is Jesus Christ. Not a, I don't know if we're having an election year, but uh, we we need a savior. We don't need another politicians.
but I hope we get a good one in there next year. But anyway, I uh, if you make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, let us know at Lagrange Free Will Baptist. Be glad to to uh, hear about that, and I hope everyone has a good week.